All right, what exactly is a social enterprise? Well, it's an um, organization that works to improve the lives of people and the environment, utilizing strategies usually reserved for commercial endeavors. Sometimes they are for profit, sometimes they are not. And um, there are as many variations in their structure as there are types of businesses. Um, social enterprise, they celebrate company that work to serve the community and it needs, um, its needs rather by providing goods and services to the less fortunate in the world. Um, this is a very important day for us that do social work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I realize that a lot of businesses now are moving towards social enterprises where, you know, um, some for profit, for, some not for profit, but it is impact um uh, what's it called? Driven. The, impact driven. The goal is what need am I meeting in this community? I mean, most of the energy companies these days, you see it, they tie it to um, communities that do not have power. So they want to power that community at the same time, make some money while doing that. So it's not just I'm just in business. Mm. It is about impact. You know, so I don't know. Do you know any social enterprise? Top of your head. Um, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was uh, really top of my head <laughs> I, I, I can't quite uh, pick one right now but um, I know a number of uh, companies are doing I mean, okay let me just call uh, strategic solutions who was here with us a few weeks ago mm -hmm. uh, Nancy Rabbi, who went off to give some grants to certain people who won, I think it's about 2,500. I think that promotion is still mm -hmm. going on. So basically, but that's just one in so many companies that are beginning to look inwards to see how they can impact their communities, not just about making money, but being able to to do community development and social and uh, work, uh, yeah. work that can help to develop communities. Absolutely. Uti, how about you? question about social enterprise yeah like do you have any any business that you you know what they do maybe you can run us through how they they run their businesses okay um so social enterprises i think the only one um i could think of maybe would be she leads africa hmm. um who have quite a popular following um and support so off the top of my head, that's sort of the only one that I can think of. But I think it's becoming more co more commonplace now mm -hmm. that, um, would I say there's more social conscience? But um, yeah, we're seeing more and more entrepreneurs going into that space. Um, and there are quite a few names um, that you probably could think of or um, attest to being social entrepreneurs in Nigeria. So um, the one that comes top of mind for me is- um, She lives Africa. Africa. Okay. Mm. Oh, um, Mama, I'll come to you. What did you find for us in the news? All right. My what's in the news has to do with Elon Musk, who sold about $5 billion of Tesla shares days after the Twitter polls that he put out. Okay, so let me read the story. Tesla CEO Elon Musk has offloaded company shares worth $5 billion days after setting off a Twitter poll in which millions voted, asking whether he should sell 10% or his huge of his huge stake in the electric car maker. The billionaire and world's richest man with a net worth of around $300 billion sold 4.5 million of his shares this week, according to regulatory filings made on Wednesday. But he, they did not suggest the unconventional virtual referendum he issued on Saturday was behind the decision. Uh, basically, he just, um, even though he has a majority share, I think he has about 17% uh, shares in, in, in the company, he took a poll in the course of the week asking whether he should, and based on the, the, the results of the poll, that he was going to do that. So I guess he might be doing a lot more in the process i don't know about that but we're watching it gives people opportunities to have a stick in tesla right so i think it's a huge one it's a very good one and um 
we're looking to those opportunities where we too can be part of these things and become the billionaires too that are also <laughs> giving out shares or selling shares well, to shareholders. Nothing is impossible. Absolutely. What is it? Uh, what God cannot do does not exist. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that <laughs> phrase. I said, wow. That's very interesting. Well, now I have said, now let me come to you. What did you fight for us in the news? Um, okay, so my headline um, reads, while countries wrangle over who should pay for the climate crisis, a community on Lagos Island is being swallowed, um, being swallowed by the sea. Mm. So this speaks to, I mean, this story resonated for me because this is probably a part of town that um, I used to live in a, a while ago. Um, and it speaks to the Oko Alpha community, uh, which more familiar as, as Alpha Beach. Um, and the fact that um, in this community, some 1,500 meters of, of um, seafront, of, of waterfront has disappeared um, and it continues to encroach. So, I mean, today, I don't think you can really still even say that there's an alpha beach mm. in terms of the way that the water has encroached. When I least used to live around there, um, there used to be the talk of there being, so the alternate route that comes from Lekki comes all the way in here. Um, and apparently the water had, you know, come in and taken the houses that were on the other side of the road. It's taken the road and now it's taken houses, you know, that were on the other side of the road and it continues to encroach. So just the fact that, you know, as world leaders are, I don't know if you've been following COP26, um, the UN Climate Change Conference um, that's been happening, which is due to end tomorrow. But whilst the world is looking to move away or to halt uh, the rise of, of global temperatures uh, to about 1.5 degrees uh, based on the, the Paris agreements, right? This idea that here we are, we've always struggled on this part of town um, in Victoria Island, in Lekki, with the you know water trying to reclaim the land. I remember when I was much younger, the whole Bar Beach experience and, and what has become Eco Atlantic today. So that entire shoreline basically is at risk and this particular community um, has been featured for the challenges that we're going through. But more importantly, whilst the world is trying to come away from fossil fuels, Nigeria is still wholly dependent um, or largely dependent on, um, on crude oil for mm -hmm. our, our income. And it doesn't seem like we're doing, um, we're, we're talking about doing things to move away from fossil fuels, but are we really doing enough to move away from fossil fuels? You know, we're talk you just talked about Tesla and electric cars. When are we going to start seeing electric cars in Nigeria? But when you talk about electric <laughs> cars, <laughs> don't go there. <laughs> Um, the electricity. So the fact is, well, are you going to burn fossil fuel to charge your car? So let me. Leave you. Don't even go there. My sister has an electric car in France, and I can tell you for free that I mean, she she took a I think she did a, a three hour trip or four hours trip to a, another state, fully charged. You know, fully. In fact, she told us, "I never again." <laughs> Will I drive this? Because she, she had uh, another option, option. of another, the other car, but she just said, oh, okay, it's a brand new car, let her try. Oh, no. She didn't try it again because charging points, this is where there is even power to charge. It's just that the, the stress <laughs> of stopping to charge, charge. and all of that. Mm. Is it when you are inside Lagos traffic for five hours? They, mm. uh, the battery, Uti, don't even go there, please. <laughs> It's not just the things for us to start to think about. Really, that's what it is. It's not just the uh, elect, uh, um, uh, um, the charging points. You're talking about electricity. What are, in the process of charging? Just two percent, and they take the light. Alleged student <laughs> union <laughs> president of Jigawa Varsity steps out with Benz. I need you. We need to see this picture. Benz and security. Omo. The president of the student union in federal government university, Duse, Jigawa State, has been seen in these photos being conveyed in a Benz with his security team surrounding him. The human rights, uh, I think someone that took the picture, I think his name is In Ini Dehe, F. Young, who shared this photo, said that Nigeria is a perfect example of how a country can be deliberately placed on the path of destruction. I found these pictures very, very interesting. I don't know if they, if they flashed the picture. So even in the picture, you would find his first lady there. The guy is, you know, bouncing with his first ladies. Then his um, ADCs, or what do I call them? I All so. decked up in ties and, you know, uh, let me see if I can count. One, two, three, four of them, red tie, like he's the president of the United States. I, I, I said, for goodness I found, sake. I found that picture very disturbing. 
very highly disturbing. Oh, please, I mean, you're to laugh today. I, I, I realized that this is a student. It took me back to when I was in school. <coughs> Student union government president. or president, student union government president. I, I, I'm, Uti. I'm speechless, really, because if at this point, I. this is what <laughs> Uti says, hi. if at this point you are, I can imagine you as a councillor, I can imagine you as a local government chairman, you I can don't. imagine you as a state governor. No, ma, that's the thing. You do not need all of those things. Why do no, we keep that on? Is the, but that is the that is the ah. mindset that we're building from this level. Huh. Imagine a student union government president at that level. You have not even started five, life. and they were they were walking it's in the car really while he's driving, and huh. it shows the state There's of problem. the state of our uh, Nigeria, as it were. There's problem. There's problem. Uti, the lobby with so us. Please, first of all, how can he afford it? Is he a student? He's a student he's now. The, the only question the we were, we were asking is, the ADCs, are they students or they that are was, hired I was aid? asking, I was asking. Um, uh, are so, those also so, students? You know, whether he's a, how he can afford it, one. Two, for me, it just speaks to the larger problem. I say this all the time. I see people on the roads, jumping traffic lights, people going one way. And all these people will beat their chest and stand up and say the government is, you know, the presence is a problem. The government is a problem. We, the government is an operation of the people. Who is it? Who makes up the government? Who are the people? So when we are at this stage already, he's already starting the, uh, there's a door opener for the, for the door. Or how, how did that thing go? He's already started that lifestyle now. But this is how we're raising young people. These are what people are thinking. These are what people are saying. Um, uh, this is what they're seeing rather and this is what they're aspiring to. So we're aspiring to the wrong things because in his mind he's arrived, right? This is how I show that I have power. This is how I show I have influence. I have money. So our values are misplaced because what else can I say? Our values are misplaced. Completely. I think I'll leave it there. Completely. Okay, we'll take a break now. When we return from the break, we're discussing gifts given. Stay with us. We'll be right back.